In today's video, I want to share with you one of my favorite technical indicators that I use to help inform my trading decisions. Bollinger Bands. Now this video is going to be a first in a series covering some of the most common and the most useful trading tools and patterns. So I really hope that you appreciate the video and some of the next topics that I'll be covering are RSI, MACD, Fibonacci retracement, trend lines, loads of other stuff as well. But feel free to request any trading topics and I'll consider adding them to the list of things to be covered. And a quick disclaimer as well before we start, technical indicators, they are not crystal balls, they are indicators. They help us make educated decisions on what can happen based on patterns. Sometimes they do not play out as we predict, so please practice effective risk management strategies when trading. Make sure to use stop losses, and of course, never, and I mean never, put in more money than you can afford to lose on trading. Trading is definitely not for everyone, and if you do not have the time and you do not have the energy to commit to learning how to trade, then you have got no business trading. Just stick to buying and holding Bitcoin. Just stack sats and chill. You don't need to worry about any of this stuff. But if you do want to learn more about trading, then let's take a look at how to effectively use Bollinger Bands. So let's go ahead and go over to our exchange account here and actually get our Bollinger Bands set up. Now I'm trading over here on Binance today, but honestly, almost all the exchanges have these indicators built in as native features, which you can easily access, whether you're using Bybit or KuCoin or Binance, which are some of my favorites, or whether you're over on an exchange like Coinbase. Normally, you just need to come up here to the top left-hand corner. It will say something like technical indicator or indicators, or you can right-click with your mouse and click on insert indicator. Then all you need to do is either select Bollinger Bands or just type in BB. So now that we have our Bollinger Bands set up, there are three key points that you need to know about with the Bollinger Bands. The first is the red line that you see here in the middle. Now this is a 20 point simple moving average. The second thing you need to know about is the upper band. So the upper band is this blue line here on the top. And the other thing is the lower band, which is the blue line here down on the bottom. Now these are the outer bands of our Bollinger Bands. So these are based on price volatility, which means that they expand when the price fluctuates. So we see here, for example, we have a lot of price fluctuation happening. So we have a lot of expansion in those upper and lower bands. Same here with the downward price movement where we have a lot of expansion in the lower and upper bands. Whereas during moments of sideways consolidation or moments of low momentum, we will actually start to see those bands contract. So you can see that happening here, for example, where we have this, this contraction of the bands and a, to a lesser extent over here, we have not as much range in the price volatility. Now, Bollinger Bands are very effective for being able to help you better time your entries into trades. And they're honestly some of the most reliable and potent trading indicators out there. Now, there's a, quite a few different ways to use them. I'll be laying out a few of them here for you. The first thing we're going to talk about here is the Bollinger Band Squeeze. So this is when we have these moments of really low volatility happening. We're going to come right back here to get a, a good example of that. So when you have this low volatility, here's a great example of a period where we had a lot of just relatively low volatility. The bands were quite contracted. Now the Bollinger Band Squeeze, this is like the quiet before the storm. This can help you identify those explosive market moves. Now you can see more localized variants of this playing out here, for example, where we had this time of consolidation, then we had a breakdown, we had this time of consolidation, then we had a slight move up, we had this time of consolidation, then we had a pretty good move up here. But if we look at a, a much bigger move that happened here, we had this longer term trend of consolidation happening without any really big moves happening in the market. And then blammo, we had a giant green candle, lots of volatility came into the market. This is something you see play out quite a lot with Bollinger Bands where you do see these contractions of the bands followed up by these more explosive volatile moments. Now that doesn't always mean they're going to go up. You have to look at other indicators to say, hey, what's going on here? But in general, 
one way or the other, they do lead to these explosive moments happening. When you do have these periods of low volatility, they're often followed by these periods of higher volatility, often in an explosive fashion. So the next thing I want to talk about is the 20 point moving average. Now, this is a very effective tool for really confirming those trend reversals. So you can use this either to say, hey, I want to open up a long here, or I want to open up a short in this position. Let me just give you a few examples of what this actually looks like. So we can see here, for example, we had the strong red candle, which brought us down. Now, this is a time when you can start looking at the market and thinking, hmm, do I want to open up a short? Do I want to start shorting the market from here? So when you see this strong move down, that may be a time when you want to consider opening a short. It's because we have moved below the 20 point moving average. Conversely, down here, you can see went through a moment of consolidation and then we crossed back above that red line. Now that might signal to some people, okay, maybe I want to buy in here. Maybe I want to enter a position that I'm going to be looking to sell at a higher price. Maybe I'm making a long over here on Bybit, for example. Whichever way you're playing the market, that is an indicator that we are seeing this reversal happening. Now, of course, you always have to practice those good risk management strategies because the Bollinger Bands in and of themselves are not the be-all, end-all of indicators, and they are an indicator. They're not a crystal ball, as we must remember. So we can see here, for example, we did have this red candle bringing us back down below that red line. You might have looked at that and thought, hmm, I'm going to open up a short here. I'm going to start shorting Bitcoin from this position, but you would have wanted to put a stop loss in right? You use that stop loss, put that stop loss just a little bit above here. So you're protecting yourself. So if your short doesn't play out how you think it's going to play out, you are protected from losing a lot of your capital. So you might want to put that in, for example, just above the red line price wise. So that would give you around $10,230 as your stop loss in this particular situation. And we can see that the market did turn around before making a more definitive move back down. Now, in terms of being able to use the red line to really work as a position where you can close out your positions as well, this is something important to look at. So for example, if we have opened up a short, so let's say we opened up our short here and we're playing it, playing it, playing it, and then we're thinking, okay, when am I gonna close this? When am I gonna take my profits, right? Maybe you've already taken profits at some point here, but when you see this happen here, when we see the candles cross back above the red line, that's really signaling that there is a reversal coming here. So this is probably the time that you want to close your short and potentially open a long position. So that's something you can be doing here. You can, of course, long and short on Bybit or on Binance and a few other exchanges as well. Or maybe you're just doing a simple buy at this point. Maybe you're just buying $5,000 of the Bitcoin at this level, and then you're going to be selling it at a point later on. And again, you can use that red line in the middle to help you know when to exit a position. So we can see here, let's assume that we're buying when we do see this trend reversal happening here. We're letting it run right up to the top here. And then we're watching again for a reversal to come in. Now we see this moment here where we did have the wicks testing just below that red line. And then of course we have a more definitive move here. That's where quite a few people might want to be exiting their positions where you're looking and saying, okay, there's a trend reversal here. We're moving into a more bearish territory at the moment. I'm going to take the profits from that position that I entered back down here when we did have that trend reversal happening. In general with Bollinger Bands, 95% of the action is actually happening between the bands. But the thing that gets everyone really excited is these moments when we actually cross above the upper or the lower bands. Now, a common mistake is to do a buy or do a sell as soon as you see that happening. So for example, we see here, we have a good strong red candle underneath the lower band. So some people might look and go, oh great, it's the market is oversold, it's time to buy. 
Or they might look here and see this first green candle above the upper band and say, oh, great, the market's overbought, it's time to sell. Well, that's not always the case. With Bollinger Bands, the first candles that cross above or below, whichever direction you happen to be going in, this is initially a continuation signal. This is initially a continuation signal. So we see here we had our first red candle below and we actually had two more red candles below before we actually moved back in and started to move into that period of consolidation. Conversely, with our green candles over here, we had our first green candle and then we had just a big string of green candles moving up and up and up and up and up until we had a very definitive reversal happening here. Now that's in this situation is where you'd likely want to either buy into the position that's a confirmation that we are moving in that situation where you're likely to see a continuation of this pattern playing out. So you want to be buying in or opening your long in this situation and then waiting for that real strong confirmation coming up here. You see as well, we have our red line here and we have a very strong momentum. So we are very far away from the red line. We're right up on the top here of that upper band. So it's very positive momentum at that stage. And only when we really see that reversal coming, where we see the candles again coming back down, testing the red line, and then, of course, falling back below that red line eventually. And a final note, Bollinger Bands, like all indicators, work very well when used in conjunction with other indicators. According to John Bollinger, the man himself, he says you should be looking to use Bollinger Bands in conjunction with MACD, volume and rsi now these will all be featured topics in coming videos in this series but the bollinger bands into themselves are an incredibly effective tool as a standalone you can only make it better when using these other indicators to help inform your decisions also of course remember have to be patient when trading this is probably one of the, the keys to successful versus unsuccessful traders those who wait for the right setups, those who can wait for things to play out, to wait for those confirmation moments to actually come through before buying or selling and opening up a long or opening up a short, whichever it might be that you're doing, you can use these kind of indicators to really help make more effective trades by being able to spot those trend reversals when we move into a bearish trend, when we go below that 20 point moving average, move into a a bullish trend when we go above the 20 point moving average, right? And we can see these continuation patterns happening where we have these strong moments of very bullish momentum when we have lots of candles above the upper band. And of course, we can see the strong moments of bearish momentum. When we have lots of candles moving below that band, but you wait for the confirmations of reversals. That's where a lot of the opportunity comes in. And that's it, guys. I hope that you learned a little bit more about what Bollinger Bands are, why they're useful, and how you can use them to make trades. Thank you so much, as always, for watching the video. If you did enjoy this one, make sure to leave a thumbs up on it. If you are new around here, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Long live the blockchain. And peace out till next time.